You see, when we build archery targets, we don't start with the marketing plan. We start with the archery target. And we have specific goals in mind we're trying to accomplish when we start building this target. We have two basic methods we use to build our foam targets. We have the rolled heat bonded method, and we have the multi-density layered method, which we call the MDL. So we have the target all rolled up. We cut it into a square. This cube is this round cut into a cube shape, which gives you a laminated target on the front. When you shoot the laminations with the arrow, it goes right in between the laminations, giving you the healing properties of a uh, open layer target. The pressure from the from the machine pushing and bonding as it rolls it gives it the same type exertion as bands and boards. When you pull your arrow out of this, it's got the same healing properties as open layer targets would have. So basically you've got a laminated target you're shooting your arrow into this way. Now when you get ready to shoot your broadheads, all you have to do is turn this target and now you're shooting into this roll this way. And you've got all this solid foam for your broadhead. So it slivers less, it stays together better, and uh, works much better for broadheads than open layer targets do, which as you know, if you've shot an open layer target with a broadhead, uh, you get slivering and very short target life. So the cube gives you the advantages of the open layer for your field points and the solid foam for your broadheads. It's an outstanding target. Uh, it's very price effective as far as shooting it. Gives you a lot of shots per cost. And uh, it's portable, has a built-in handle, freestanding. And it's really a very versatile target. The other method we use to build archery targets is called the MDL, which is multi-density layered target. The target is built using different densities of foam layered. This happens to be a cross section of a Hyper 420. The first piece of foam is only two inches in from the front. So what happens when you shoot this uh, MDL target? The arrow enters the target and it encounters the first layer of arrow armor and it immediately starts slowing down. This uh, layer of arrow armor will absorb a lot of the arrow's energy. As it travels through the next layer of medium density foam, it's losing more of its power. When it encounters this, arrow, this uh, uh, layer of arrow armor, it's slowed way down. It's already lost 30, 40, 50 percent of its uh, uh, energy, depending on how powerful your bow is. And if you're only shooting 300 to 310 feet per second, it's not going to make it much past this layer of arrow armor. If, however, you're shooting 400 feet per second or so, it's going to get back to this layer. But it's not going to make it much past this. Uh, the reason we make this target with a layer of arrow armor so close to the front is for crossbows. If you're shooting a crossbow with a short bolt, you have to stop that bolt fairly quickly. So this layer will absorb a lot of the energy. If you're shooting a 20-22 uh, inch bolt, you still got plenty of arrows sticking out the front to pull it out. What's really nice about this MDL, it works equally well with broadheads or field points. We also use the MDL system on our hybrid and our King series targets. The King series is a less expensive target designed specifically for broadheads and broadheads only. The uh, material used is different. There's no arrow armor in the uh, King series. Instead, it has light density, medium density, then a high density, density uh, foam made of the same material as the medium and low density. And on the crossbow, it's placed in the center. On the regular compound kings, it's placed in the back. And the reason we place this, the, the crossbow in the center is so uh, the shorter bolts can be pulled. So they're not burying up the flesh before they stop. Now the hybrid is only 10 inches thick, and it's a blend of different materials, uh, mostly medium to high density. It's broadhead or field point, but it's mostly a camp target. It's not designed to be stuck up in the backyard and shot every day, although a lot of people do because uh, uh, they are a very nice target. They're inexpensive, and uh, we sell a lot of hybrids. But it was made the way it is made, specifically as a camp target or portable target, something you take with you when you go out in the uh, woods. You just want to throw something in your truck, take along with you. The, the hybrid's perfect. We also make a Hyper 300, which is a uh, MDL target, 
and it has one layer of arrow armor. It stops 300 foot per second arrows. It's only uh, 15 by 15 by 12 inches thick, really lightweight, and uh, I built it specifically to take with me last year. I went up to New Mexico to chase elk a little bit. I wanted a really small target to put on the horse and uh, get up in the mountains. That was a pretty good ride up in there, and I had to have something light and small, and that's why I designed that target. And it worked so good that uh, we just went ahead and put it in the line this year. So basically the Hyper line has uh, four targets, the 420, the 350, the 350 Camp, which is a smaller version of the 350, and then the 300, which is really a small portable target. The Hybrid is built in a 20 by 20 by 10 inch thickness. And as I said earlier, it's an inexpensive target that is designed for... Uh, Camps, portability, that sort of thing. Then we also have the Compound King, which is built in two sizes, and the Crossbow King, which is a, a 15 and a half by 15 and a half by 18 inch thick, uh, broadhead only, crossbow target. Now that pulled pretty nice. That's a, a PSC Radio X Weave, and uh, it was a horrible pull. In fact, it pulled out pretty easily. My experience has been, uh, when you shoot at 20 yards, or whatever distance you're shooting, the uh, force required to, move the, to remove the arrow is kind of proportional to the weight you're shooting. So if you're shooting a 60 pound bow, and uh, you can pull 60 pounds fine, you won't have any trouble pulling your arrows out. And if you're shooting a 30 pound bow, same thing, or a 70 pound bow. If uh, you've got enough strength to pull the uh, uh, bow back, then you'll have no problem all pulling the arrows out. But again, this Radio X weave, it, uh, it pulled out pretty nice. Uh, there we have the broadhead. And the broadheads are always going to pull nice. Uh, that's on the uh, Radio, or on the uh, Maxis arrow, of course. That's what I shoot. And as you can see, it came right out. That arrow pulled really easily, and that's a that's a Carbon Express again, uh, a Rebel Light Carbon Express, and it pulled out no problem whatsoever. Uh, I really like the Carbon Express arrows. Maybe it's uh, I shoot them a lot, and that's why I never encounter any problems at all with arrow removal. But uh, anyway, pull another one. That arrow wasn't bad. That is a, a flatline arrow by Easton. Dead on arrival, it says. And uh, it didn't pull bad at all. It uh, has a dull finish, much like the Maxis, and like the PSE Radio X Weave, which has a dull finish also. That arrow pulled really nice. And that is a, uh, a trophy ridge. Hailfire 350. It has an outsert, which probably aided in arrow removal because it made a bigger hole going in than the arrow shaft. It's got a really shiny finish, so without the outsert, it may have bonded to the foam, but it didn't bond at all uh, because, as I said, it has that outsert, which made a slightly larger hole than the arrow shaft, and it pulled out really easy. So, yeah, I dropped the arrow. Anyway, in closing, I'd like to say that arrow removal is very dependent upon setup, arrow speed, type of arrow you're shooting, and there are a ton of variables. Each person's uh, setup is different, and everyone's arrow pulls differently. Uh, these targets are designed to give you maximum, longe maximum longevity, uh, the most bang for your buck, uh, they're really designed to be shot with either broadhead or field point and uh, hit a happy medium between longevity and arrow removal. Uh, 